Welcome inside the Irwin Center in Austin, Texas. The house lights down. The anthem has been sung and a big game coming up between the Atlantic 10's VCU Rams and the Big 12's Texas Longhorns. Great to have you with us. We saw the handshakes between Mike Rhodes and Shaka Smart. Of course, Shaka spent a bunch of time there, took them to a Final Four. How big a game is this for Shaka Smart? Oh, Bart, this is you, to your point. Shaka's already been to VCU, but this is his former employer. He wants to do well. You saw the embrace early. Both coaches and teams have been talking about it all week long. It's a big game, not only for Shaka, but for the players and assistant coaches as well. Well, these teams played exactly one year ago, and it was a terrific game played in Richmond. Shaka Smart taking on the program he took to the 2011 Final Four. That was the entrance. Shook the hand of his former assistant, Mike Rhodes. Rams senior, Justin Tillman's 22 points helped VCU come back from an early 19-point Texas lead. Andrew Jones knocked down four three-pointers. And Mo Bamba brought down the house with this monster jam. But Dylan Osikowski, a late three-pointer, part of his 17-point night, that helped the Longhorns escape with a 71-67 to 67 win. So Texas this year won their first five games, an impressive win against North Carolina. They've lost their last two to Michigan State, and then that loss out of the blue last Friday to Radford. They just have not shot the ball well the last couple of games. No, Mark, they really struggled. And that Radford team on paper doesn't look very good, but they are a good ball club. But Texas has really struggled of, of late. To your point, they lost to a very good Michigan State team and lost to Radford. It's cold outside for Texas and cold inside. They're going to have to get better shots and they're going to have to make threes if they want a chance to win this game at home against VCU. Both teams' guards certainly can be productive and can be the offensive catalyst. Well, yes, they are. Catalyst is the right word for both guys because they are the engines offensively for these ball clubs. And then on the defensive end of the floor, they also get a lot done. VCU doesn't want to let Roach get an open floor because he is extremely dangerous and probably the, one of the most athletic guards in college basketball. So VCU taking on Texas from the Irwin Center in Austin. Should be a fun game tonight as Shaka Smart taking on his old program. And the opening tip is straight ahead. VCU Texas from the Irwin Center in Austin tonight. You see VCU at 6-2 and two, and Texas the five straight wins to start the season. They have dropped their last two. Shaka Smart's team. Five NCAA tournament appearances as the VCU head coach. Of course, beat Kansas to go to the 2011 Final Four. And it must be difficult, Lance, when you make so much history in one school and then you depart to another and then you are contractually obligated to come back and play your old school. Yeah, how about VCU with the presence of mind to make sure that got into the Texas deal if they were going to get Coach Shaka Smart, who at the time arguably was one of the hottest college coaches in the land. But hey, I, I think he's excited and enjoys these challenges. Being here at Texas, he's done a great job. And I think this team also embodies Shaka's spirit more than any of the teams previous to this season. Texas in the hole, White has the first possession. A wide open Matt Coleman shoots a three and drains it. So they hit their first shot, but you can make the argument here, Lance, they've been shooting the three ball too much the last few games and haven't been hitting that shot. Yeah, as we talked about earlier, I mean, they're shooting 45, 46% of their shots are from beyond the arc, and for a team shooting, you know, 30% from, from beyond the arc, that's just too many threes. They've got to get better looks, Texas does, and not rely so much on the three-point ball. Here's the three from the corner, and that's knocked down. Dariante Jenkins. Jenkins is the third guy for this VCU club, and I think that'll be huge for this game. You know, Evans, the point guard, VCU, he's critical for them in terms of scoring. But when he gets help, that makes them all the more dangerous. Osikowski trying to get to the rim was stripped, but fouled. 
So our first whistle of the game goes against VCU. You saw Febris there make the extra pass to Osikowski. That's something that Coach Smart worked on a lot in the offseason. Not holding the ball, making that extra pass. That sometimes they've even been a little too unselfish, Mark, passing up on shots that might have been good shots to take in norm under normal circumstances. There's Mike Rhodes in his second season. Of course, he was an assistant under Shaka Smart. And the team went to the Final Four in 2011. Mike Rhodes went to Rice. Spent three seasons there. In fact, he led Rice to the first 21 season, 20 win season in over 10 years, and then came back to VCU. And after he got the job, called it a dream come true, and that he is home. Yeah, I've really watched, liked watching him in his preparation very positive in his attitude talks about not playing frustrated Jenkins off the back rim miss but an offensive rebound by Marcus Santos Silva a three rims out for the guard Marcus Evans but we saw defensively Texas put on some pressure after the made free throw yeah you, you'll see ver this is havoc versus havoc essentially these these two coaches know each other well Spent a lot of time together at VCU and otherwise they still communicate and both of them like to pressure the ball and create pace in the way they play. Mosikowski with the left hand, it's tipped out and taken off the floor by Isaac Van. 4-3 early lead for Texas just a couple of minutes into the game. VCU does a very good job of keeping the floor spread and getting three-point shooters behind the arc. So blocked by Jericho Sims, the run out, Febris. Coleman trying to bounce pass down low, not a good idea. That's deflected by Santos Silva. Stolen by Jenkins, who pulls up from 14. Febris tips it to the sideline and saved by VCU's Jenkins. Van a three. Out of bounds, last touched by Matt Coleman of Texas, it's VCU ball. Yeah, a couple of possessions ago, you saw the block by Sims on Santos Silva. I'm not gonna get a lot there. This VCU ball club plays through their perimeter. So they tried to open the floor and get something from the big, but the Texas bigs are much bigger and more athletic than the VCU bigs. Jenkins. Three-point shot, the lone bucket so far for VCU, stumbling a bit. Evans gets it back for Douglas and launches a three and nails it. Marcus Evans, hitting 30% of his three-point shots, gives VCU the lead. Yeah, the, the, you you got to throw the percentages out in terms of what either one of these teams shoot, particularly VCU. They're going to heavily rely on the three ball and the pace. It's just what they do. Look like... Roach wanted a lob down low, but that was misread by Osikowski, a steal, and an Evans three is short. Hey, that's a good example. And for, for them, that's not necessarily a bad shot. That's, you know, that's a, the offensive version of the Havoc, if you will. Well, it slows it down for Texas. Got four subs waiting at the scores table to come in for the Longhorns. Wisitkowski, quick pass down low, Sims the spin and lays it in. And I'm sure Shaka Smart would like to see more of that high percentage shot. Well, that's where Texas has to take advantage because they're a lot bigger and more athletic. You saw Santo Silver on the poor double team. And if you don't get to the Texas guys quickly around the basket, they should have field day all night long because of that athletic team. This by Jenkins. Herman Roach. He really exemplified that really poor shooting night against Radford the other night. Here's Sims again, maybe waited a little too long, and that allowed Santos Silva to come from the backside and swat it out of bounds. It'll be Texas ball when we come back, and it's an early 6-6 game in Austin. Learn more. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball, and Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. 
Some photos from the run to the 2011 Final Four for VCU. They went from the first four to the final four. They beat USC and Dayton in the first four, then beat Georgetown, Purdue, Florida State, and Kansas. Lost to Butler in the final four. UConn won the title. 16 NCAA tournament appearances. They'd gone to seven straight. That streak ended last year. In fact, last year also ended 11 consecutive seasons of 24 plus wins for VCU. So not only after Shaka left, Will Wade kept it going and Mike Rhodes, that did end last year when they didn't make the tournament. But this has been a solid, solid program, VCU. Yeah, and I, I think when that team went to the Final Four, when Shaka took them to the Final Four, it catapulted them to being, an, I think, a nice finish by Jackson. One of the elite teams that's not a Power Five, not in a Power Five conference. Texas has made match substitutions. You saw Jackson Hayes with the bucket at the other end through freshman who was checked in and a jumper up and in for Marcus Evans, who has an early five points in the 8-8 game. Yeah, and the guys on the floor for Texas, this just shows the confidence that Shaka Smart has in his young guys. He's just done a tremendous job with his recruiting. Doesn't get talked about a lot. He has some fabulous ball players that are very young on this ball club. Three missed by freshman Courtney Ramey. There's Sims from the corner. Tipped back out by Santos Silva and kept alive by Crowfield. Here is Santos Silva on Hayes. Pass down low. And Douglas has it blocked by Jackson Hayes. Boy, just an elite athlete. Shot blocker. Hands. Hayes has as bright a future as anyone in the gym tonight. Kamaka Hepa who is from Barrow, Alaska, a true freshman with his first bucket of the night. Yeah, and he hasn't gotten a ton of minutes. That was a great shooter. He needs to transfer that great shooting in practice onto, or into the games, I should say, but he's as good a shooter as you'll find. Fouls on Ramey, his first. And just a nice job by Roach getting into the teeth of the defense. And just with a guy like Hayes on your roster, all you have to do is throw that thing up to the, to the rim. And then, of course, showing the athleticism there and jumping after the ball's been released from the offensive player. That's just how quick he is off of his feet. Lefty Silva has not had a great time from the line this year. Just 40% misses the first. Yeah, and Silva, he gets a little bit in his head. Sam tells Silva what they need from him earlier, a couple of plays ago, you saw him tip the ball outside and then make the nice pass. And he just needs to be solid. When he can, make free throws, box out, because VCU is going to play through their guards. One and two for Santos Silva, who played well off the bench in last year's matchup with Texas. Santos Silva had 8.6 rebounds in that game. A little bit of pressure. Mitru Long gets it up in the three from the corner. There's Hepa once again who's made an early statement since coming into the game. Yeah, and the extra pass stays in the corner by the freshman Ramey. This is a very unselfish Texas ball club. Well, Hepa had hit three of ten three-point shots on the year coming in. He's hit two three-point shots to start tonight. Williams in the lane, fighting his way, and Hayes with some contact. And, and Williams, with his ability to put the ball on the floor, that's the exact right play to make, especially when Hepa's guarding him. One of the areas where Hepa has to get better is on the perimeter. Doesn't have the feet necessarily to guard smaller guys out on the perimeter. So Williams does the exact right thing you want him to do, which is attack those feet. Two shots for the freshman Vince Williams out of Toledo, Ohio, St. John's Jesuit High School. Point guard Matt Coleman going to come back in for Texas, replacing Kerwin Roach. That's Michael Gilmore in the game for VCU. He's the only remaining player on the VCU roster that played for Shaka Smart at VCU. Yeah, and, and Gilmore is basically, he's in the, you typically would say an extension of the coach, he's an extension of the program. That's an offensive foul against Ramey, so that's two quick ones on the freshman out of Webster Groves, Missouri. You should say, 
and two on Ramey early. You see the field goal percentages, sir. The field goal's three for 14 for VCU to start the game. Van with a three makes it a one-point game. So you might be three for 14, and then you make a shot, and you're just down one point. Yeah, it won't, it won't discourage them. I mean, that, that's what they do. They, you know, they feed off of Van. And, and I mean, this team, they look <laughs> to get shots up in terms of volume. You know, they scored it as a two. And now they may go back and take a look at that at the next time out. Shot clock down to seven. Eli Mitru Long down to three. A three is on the way. Away from the ball. Jackson Hayes and Vince Williams all wrapped up. Well, just an excellent defensive possession there by BCU. Keeping the small guards, Coleman and Long, out on the perimeter, not allowing them to break the defense down. Three-point, that's... Uh, Looked like he landed inside the three-point line. He took off outside. He shot out just outside of him. See, Hayes on the bench, two fouls. He had some foul trouble a few nights ago in the loss to Radford. That's a three from Gilmore, in and out. Well, coming into this game, 44% of VCU shots were three-pointers. Texas, 46% of their shots were three-pointers. Yeah, and I, I think VCU, I can see that. They have to, we can see they have to play that way. It's part of their system. They rely heavily on Evans. Texas has good guards as well, but they also have size. So you would hope that they can lower that percentage and get shot closer to the basket considering the size difference that they offer and athletic difference. Well, another offensive foul on Texas, this one on Sims. First foul on Sims, but that's the third offensive foul whistled against Texas, so they have four turnovers tonight already. None so far for VCU. VCU does a great job of leaving the middle of the floor wide open. Well, there's their first turnover on the travel by Gilmore. Yeah, and with Gilmore, he's an energy guy smart knows what the coaches want want he's just got to let that ball flow right through him and not try to do things that are outside of his comfort zone so eight minutes into the game texas with the ball in a two-point lead sims with texas you can certainly live with that he saw an open lane momentarily and his foul going to the host. Yeah, an uncharacteristic by Gilmore. You got the turnover, then the foul. But hey, <laughs> VCU down by two. Back at Austin, Texas from the Irwin Center. VCU and Texas. 11.51 to play first half. They did take a look at the Isaac Van, what we thought may have been a three. It does stay a two. And it's a two-point lead for Texas out of the timeout. Coleman is a Virginia native. Norfolk, Virginia. Fembris, six to shoot. Corey Douglas got to handle that defensively for VCU. Here they are on the run, and that is intended for Van, but was deflected out of bounds by Texas. VCU is going to put pressure on Texas all night long. Again, percentages don't necessarily play the percentage game, but they... They're going to get the volume up in terms of shot opportunities. You're telling me it's about volume. It's about. It's <laughs> got to be about volume when you're shooting what they're shooting from the, from beyond the arc. Evans fouled by Mitru Long going after the loose ball. First one on Eli Mitru Long. And, and at, at some level, it has to be about volume. I mean, because when you look at the matchups, you Look at the size difference at, at positions. Texas has a has a huge advantage. So to level the playing field, VCU again, they instill a higher level of havoc, if you will. And a little havoc versus havoc. Haven't seen a whole lot of pressure tonight defensively from either team. But yeah, well, Texas in the zone now going to force the jump shot. 
Offensive rebound by Douglas, a three from Jenkins, rattles around and in for Dariante Jenkins, his second three tonight. He puts VCU up by one. Yeah, and he makes them dangerous again. Van and Evans, they're going to get there. But when Jenkins, when they can get him going, he struggled of late. Well, they're trying to use the link, but the lob to Sims, they can't finish it. VCU <laughs> has scored six consecutive and a three missed. How about that heat check? <laughs> Osikowski driving. Couldn't get it to crawl over the rim. And taken away by Vince Williams. Here I am talking about Texas's size and length. And they're having trouble at the rim. VCU doing a great job with rim, rim protection. Ferris. Blocked out of bounds, staying with Texas. Gotta love those, huh? Yeah, I thought that was really good defense. Van did a great job, and the officials are good about allowing players to own the real estate, defensive players that's right above them. Did a great job of protecting the rim. There's the lob, and this time from Roach to Jericho Sims in the finish. Yeah, and I see, I think Texas needs to push the envelope in that area, attacking the rim, either through the lob or getting around the rim. They don't have to shoot as much from the perimeter as does VCU because of their size and athleticism. And they've got two or three guys, you just throw it up and they'll go get it and finish. Coleman, the floater, rolls around and in for Matt Coleman. Five point. Five points for Matt Coleman, giving Texas a three-point lead. And Texas living in the zone right now. Jenkins shooting over Osikowski. Loose ball in the corner. Fans save it. Throws it back to Evans. VCU's got uh, Sean Mobley, by the way, on the floor. Missed the last couple of games with a bruised left knee. Evans three. That's short. Sikowski outlets for Coleman. Nine minutes to play first half in Austin. Sims. Texas starting to do a better job of taking advantage of that link down low and now a 6-0 run for Texas. Yeah, they, they vacated the three-point line, rightfully so, getting it in the hands of their big fellow right around the rim. Evans crashed into Coleman. Five to shoot. Mobley in the lane. The floater off the left side. Batted around. Sims had it for a moment. He had it knocked away, and it's Texas ball. The lobs to Sims have been effective for Texas. Well, yes, yeah, the right play as he rolls right down the lane. And Coleman makes an excellent drop right into the hands and then right up by the rim. Look at that. He can catch and finish. Virtually nothing you can do about that. You VCU, you got to do your work much earlier. Once Sims or Jackson or Roach get around the rim, it's too late. You got to do your work early on those guys. Points in the paint here early in this game, favoring Texas 10-2. In fact, that's something Co Coach Rhodes talked about in his shoot around. I mean, he covered it was like looking at a dissertation. He covered just about, I mean, not just about, he covered every phase of the game. And one of them was getting to these athletes early for Texas. Three ball off the mark for Eli Mitru Long. Kel Sims in the game for VCU. Texas staying in that zone in the half court. And Sims is not going to look to score as Evans would. That's a deep three from Derry Ante Jenkins, his third three tonight. Jenkins did not have a great game against Texas last year. Went one of six in three-point shooting. He's off to a much better start from beyond the arc tonight against the Longhorns. Yeah, and he's the guy that they talk about who's been struggling, and <laughs> he's warmed up <laughs> at the right night. But again, the young fella, Jericho, catches. Look at that. <laughs> You've got to push him out early. If you don't, <laughs> you could end up on a poster.
Back here in Austin, coming up on Saturday, 3.30 Eastern, Georgetown taking on Syracuse. And then at 5.30, Yale taking on Zion Williamson at Cameron Indoor and third-ranked Duke. ESPN College Hoops Saturday, 3.30 at 5.30 Eastern, live on ESPN and streaming on the ESPN app. This guy has uh, been all the talk in college basketball to start the season, and rightfully so. Yeah, and I don't know what's better. I don't know if the name or the game is better. But both, to me, are quite impressive. How about the Tropics jersey there? Will Farrell, I don't think, is here tonight. They don't model that. Little contact there from Jenkins. Pick up the foul for VCU, number one on Jenkins, who's three-point shooting right now, keeping VCU right in the game, only down two. Yeah, he's kept them around and, and relevant. And I mean, we talked about it last game when Texas played Rafford. A lot of times when you have a team like a VCU playing against a, a, a well-known program like Texas from a Power Five conference. Conference, you want to be around, just hang around and give yourself a chance to win late. Wisikowski's pass knocked away and staying with Texas. We talk about this match of VCU Texas, and we alluded to it at the top of the show. What VCU has done with their coaches is they write into their contract, if they go to another job, that school has to play a home-and-home -home with VCU. It's knocked out of the hands of Ramey, and here comes the Rams. Fifth Texas turnover, knocked away. That went off Jenkins' chest and out of bounds to Texas. So when Shaka Smart left, they knew Texas was gonna have to play VCU twice. They played last year in Richmond, this year they're obviously playing here in Austin. So you also have Will Wade, who left to go to LSU, they have not yet played. So at some point, LSU is going to have to play a home and home against VCU. You see that coaching tree? What a staff he had on that, that 2011 Final Four team. Mike Jones, who came here with Radford on Friday and beat Shaka Smart in Texas. First time they'd ever beat a ranked team in Radford history. Mike Rhodes, Will Wade also on that staff, part of the coaching tree for Shaka. Yeah, and you don't think of Shock in that light because he's so young, but I mean, he's been a head coach. I talked to him earlier this season about it for 10 years. And he's just done an exceptional job of putting out assistant coaches and putting them into the marketplace to, to lead and run their own program. I mean, kind of, kind of tongue-in-cheek, I asked Shock. I said, so once the contract's fulfilled, you've played VCU twice. If you take a look at that offensive foul on Mobley, so there's no chance you're just going to kind of schedule VCU down the road. He's like, eh, you know, don't hold your breath on that once we get the contract fulfilled. I think it's a brilliant move by VCU. Oh, no doubt. You know, basically what they're saying is you're not going to use us and, and advance yourself without us being a part of it or, or sharing in that success. Hey, who wants to go to the Seagull Center where they've sold out 122 consecutive games? That's well off the mark from Roach and out of bounds to VCU. It's, the, the fans at VCU know how good a home court advantage they have. A lot of folks around the country may not. That is a really difficult place to go in and win, and Shaka certainly knew that and had a tough time pulling out a win for Texas here last year. Yeah, and not only that, you got VCU, you know, UVA is up the road, you got Radford. I mean, the state of Virginia has some very good basketball programs that are reputable and, and making a lot of noise nationally on, on a consistent basis. As a matter of fact, VCU, <laughs> speaking of UVA. Yeah, they play there on uh, Sunday. Yeah, <laughs> they've got to go to Charlottesville, yeah, and, and play one of the best teams and coaches uh, in, in the nation. Sean Mobley shooting the front end of a one and one and hitting that. Mobley missed the last couple of games with a left knee bruise. That's what's ahead for the Rams. They have Wichita State on ESPN2 just before Christmas. And they start getting into conference play in the Atlantic 10. They're in their seventh season in the Atlantic 10. When they went to the Final Four, they were still in the Colonial Athletic Association. And now in the A-10 for the seventh season. He drew long with a drive. The floater tried to kiss in, but there is Jackson Hayes to flush it. Credit. Long, Long has been great for this basketball team. Texas, after the first game or two, he sold it in. He, 
had a red shirt year and he's just been exceptional coming off the bench and just just being solid he's playing with two fouls pro that's all for the offensive foul his first long moving his feet here you might this is like a pass because big has to step over to help and of course Jackson cleans it up Jackson Hayes, a true freshman, 6'11", 220 pounds. His dad, Jonathan Hayes, was an All-American tight end in Iowa and then for a dozen years in the NFL, primarily with the Chiefs and Steelers, and now is the tight end coach for the Cincinnati Bengals. A 7'4 wingspan for Jackson Hayes. Certainly has come in with not near as much fanfare, say, as a Mobamba or a Jared Allen. But a guy with a lot of upside. There's a HEPA three trying to hit his third three of the game. But Hayes with the offensive rebound. Oh, he has incredible hands. <laughs> that doesn't count. You miss Hayes. <laughs> He's starting to feel it a little bit right now. Well, yeah, I mean, his hands, the mitts. Watch this. <laughs> it just takes it right out of the air and the ball at its apex. And Marco Santos Silva's not a short guy. He's 6'7". No, he, he's not. But that's an example of what Coach Rhodes was talking about earlier today, of having to do your work early against this Texas ball club, particularly the bigs. I mean, they're so long and athletic. You really got to overbox them out, if you will. Hayes coming out. And you know what? I need to give Hayes his mom credit because his mom, Christy, played basketball at Drake, was the Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year as a senior back in the mid-'90s. So he's not getting all his athleticism for dad. Mom is certainly kicking in a lot, too. Yeah, and not only that, Hayes is on record for saying that mom is, the, in a lot of ways, the, the basketball behind, behind it. I mean, she critiques him and coaches him, and I guess she spent some time working with or studying some of Coach Pat Summit direction and, and philosophy. And, yes. Uh, has impacted him in, in many ways. Five-point lead for Texas is their largest of the game. Under four and a half minutes to play first half. Douglas tried to kiss that in. Marcus Santos Silva fouled by Hepa. Yeah, and Douglas for VCU playing a little bit outside of his envelope. He's a sophomore, but they've spent a lot of time with him starting at Rice. Went to Tallahassee, then he came back, transferred to VCU, but he's a big part of their future in terms of what he offers this ball club. Coming up this Saturday, 8 Eastern on ESPN, the 84th Heisman Trophy ceremony. Will it be Alabama's Tua Tango Vailoa, Oklahoma's Kyler Murray, or the third quarterback, Ohio State's Dwayne Haskins. Find out who wins the most coveted award in college football Saturday, 8 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. You got a favorite out of those three? Ah, <laughs> uh, you're going to put me on the spot. I am. You go first. I think two is still going to win it. Plus, we're in Austin, Texas. If I say an Oklahoma quarterback is going to win the Heisman, I may not make it out of the Irwin Center tonight. See, that's what I'm saying. You can't, I mean, you can't ask me that yes. question sitting in this building. Ositkowski, going to lay it in for the Longhorns. Don't uh, discount Dwayne as well at Ohio State. You, you, you want to know who's going to win it? Tell me. That's who's going to win it. You think so? The passing. I mean, I think he's averaged over 400 yards last four games. He's kind of gotten overshadowed by the other two. He has. Murray's been pretty impressed. All of them have been very good. Yes. But that's what win. The passing has been unbelievable. Have you seen some of that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the, the passing has been incredible. He glued to the TV on Saturday or the app if I'm not near a TV. Thanks for going first, by the way. You got it. <laughs> Down to five. Kerwin Roach barreled into the defender and that's an offensive foul. There to take the charge was Marcus Evans. Five-point lead for Texas with 3.15 to play first half. If I can in any way, I always try to promote 
cancer awareness, and I know there's breast cancer awareness is going on right now, and I just want everybody just to support, because you know it could happen to anybody at any given moment, and it just it's not always about yourself. And I learned to just think of it as a it's bigger than just basketball, like it's bigger than just me. The only the strong survive, like so if you're strong harder than you're just strong mentally, you can keep persevere through anything. Very courageous and inspiring Andrew Jones talking about raising funds. The V Foundation, you can join ESPN and the V Foundation in the fight against cancer. Visit v.org slash donate. All donations benefit the V Foundation for cancer research. That's a live look at Andrew sitting on the, can the, uh, the bench for Texas. Played in a couple of games so far this year. I talked to him before the game. He says after the Purdue game, which is this Sunday, a couple days after that, We'll finish classes and he'll go to the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston to begin another round of chemo that will take a little less than a month. Then he hopes to be back in class for Texas to start the semester in January, the new semester. And we wish him the best because he is a terrific, terrific kid. Battling leukemia. You know, he played in this game at VCU, had 19 points last year, broke his wrist in that game, was diagnosed with leukemia in January. Completed his latest round of treatment just before school started in August this year. And a very inspiring story and, and somebody that since he has endured this battle with leukemia has been right on the front lines of encouraging others to donate to cancer research. Yeah, and he was essentially who the Texas team was playing for last season. A very emotional time, but he's been a huge inspiration to people all over the country. Off the line from Kerwin Roach. VCU down five. Just under two and a half minutes to play in the first half here in Austin. And credit VCU and Coach Roach for the job that they've done on Roach so far, keeping him extremely quiet out of the offense for Texas thus far. That's a long two from Evans off the back rim, the long rebound to Eli Mitru Long. Sikowski. Neither team with any offensive flow or identity in this game other than that young man right there. He's about the only bright spot from an offensive perspective. Four threes here in the first half for VCU's Deriante Jenkins. You know, and neither team has, uh, again, without with the exception of Jenkins, has gotten into a, an offensive rhythm, if you will. Essentially, no flow, which has allowed VCU to keep it close. Oh. See some uh, VCU fans there behind their bench. Oh, yeah, this is a signature game for this program. Coming in here playing against your, your old coach on national TV. You think they aren't feeling this? Evans drives in the lane. A tough off-balance shot that he got to go. Marcus Evans. And he got away with the foul long did. Nice finish. We talked with Mike Rhodes about Evans today. He said he thought Evans is only about 70-75% healthy. He's had a couple of Achilles injuries. That ball rolls off the rim. Yeah, Evans, he hadn't had the healthiest time of late. Look at the push right there. I think Evans owns that space. It was a great job of absorbing the hit and still able to finish that. Well, these are critical for Roach. He's just had a hard time tonight. VCU has done a very good job of keeping him out of the paint. You saw the charge earlier, keeping him from, from gaining a rhythm. Not that one to go, makes it a two-point game with just over a minute to go. Isaac Van finds Evans, he lines up a three, let it go, and he got fouled. Eli Mitru Long is called for the push there, and it's three free throws upcoming. And if Evans can hit all three, 
came and got the hand after the release. Evans, who is a 71% free throw shooter. Looks in the injuries for Marcus Evans. He played his first couple of seasons for Mike Rhodes at Rice, then transferred, sat out last year, was injured with the Achilles as well. Now he's one more free throw away from giving them the lead. Only VCU lead came at the 11 minute mark in his first half when they were up briefly 15 14. Well, Jenkins and Evans have combined for 22 of VCU's 29 points. With under a minute to go, first half. VCU has the one point lead. Three left corner rattles home for Jace Febris. He's been one of their better three point shooters this year at 41%. It's his first three point shot of the night. Marcus Santos Silva fighting, and he's fouled. on Jericho Sims, his second. And Roach went in aggressively, but there's the foul on the bump. And Santos Silva went up. Santos Silva has struggled from the line. And is well off the right side with the first. Texas is going to use a timeout. So with the Texas 30-second timeout, we'll take a 30-second timeout as well from here at the Irwin Center in Austin. VCU has brought some of their fans here to Austin, Texas. That's not a hard sell for fans to come to Austin, one of the great cities in the United States, but the VCU Ram fans wanted to see a win against their old coach, Shaka Smart. Most of the offense for VCU has come through two sources. The three-point shooting of Dariante Jenkins, who's hit four threes there in the first half of his seven total field goals between him and Evans, Marcus Evans. The rest of the team, as you saw, just one of 14 from the field. Second free throw coming here from Marcus Santos Silva. And he hits one of two. Pressure after the bait free throw by VCU. And then Sims throws it away. Stolen by Evans. They can hold it for the final shot here, VCU, as the shot clock is off. Timeout. VCU. Well, that's the first Texas turnover due to the VCU pressure so far tonight. And they've got a chance to take the lead back here before halftime. Well, the three-point shooting for Dariante Jenkins has been front and center tonight for VCU. 12 points for Jenkins. All the points coming by his four made threes. Again, a tough shooting game for him a year ago when he played Texas at the Siegel Center in Richmond. He went one for six. Did finish the game with a dozen points, but did only hit one of his six three-point shots in that one. Tonight, four for seven. Junior out of the state of South Carolina. See what Mike Rhodes and the VCU offense is dialed up to finish off this first half. Evans off a Mobley screen. And a Texas foul stops the clock just under five seconds to go. That's on Matt Coleman. First on Coleman. And two shots coming here. For Evans is VCU in the double bonus. Oh, 
Three of three from the line so far tonight. As a redshirt junior from Chesapeake, Virginia. Link to Corey Douglas checks back in for VCU. Along with Mikel Sims. Evans to break the tie and does so. 32 31 VCU. Ball comes in to Coleman. He's only got three seconds. And a long shot from about 50 feet away goes over the backboard. And despite only shooting 26% from the field in the first half, it's VCU with the one point lead at 32 to 31. And Lance is standing by with Coach Shaka Smart. Coach Smart, not a whole lot of offensive rhythm early or in the middle of the first half. You start going inside. How do you get some team continuity? Well, we got to attack when we come out of the press. I think we're holding it a little bit too tentative there. And then at the end of the clock, they're doing a good job guarding us. So I think attacking earlier in the possession, when we do have an open look, taking it, it's a fine line because we've really been emphasizing getting the paint. Clearly one of their strategies was to take Roach out of the game. Yep. Coach, how do you get him involved, or do you feel confident that the other guys can get it done without him being able to score? Well, I think he's involved. It's a matter of getting him in situations that where he – he finishes off the play. We got the ball in his hands. We need to slip out of some ball screens and attack a little bit more with him. But he's going to have to, when he gets two on him, move the ball, and then we can attack the play four on three. Good luck in the second half, Coach. Thanks, Lance. 32-31 VCU at the break. Coming up after the commercial break, we'll send it to the studio for the halftime report. Dallin Cuff, Sean Farnham in the studio will break down the upcoming game between Nevada and Arizona State. And a lot more also coming up from Austin. Back at the Irwin Center in Austin, Texas, about ready to start the second half. It's a 32-31 lead for VCU, along with Lance Blanks. I'm Mark Neely. How about this? VCU only shoots 26% in <laughs> yeah. the half, and they have the lead. For Texas, though, offensively, they were able to use some of that link to Jericho Sims in the first half. Yeah, they were, and I thought that changed the game in some ways for Texas because they were just struggling. But this young man is very difficult to shoot over the top, as you see. But Texas rewarded him on the other end of the floor and got some nice baskets. Watch this. Look up by the rim. Watch your head first because he's going to put you on a poster if you don't. I thought Texas was excellent. The guards were at finding Jericho in positions around the basket where Texas has the advantage. But this man here, Jenkins, he was the man of the hour for VCU. He kept them in the game from distance to your point shooting 26 percent 25.8 percent and his four threes to me were the difference of course along with Evans steadying the ship with his offense yeah Evans along with Jenkins combined shot seven for 17 the rest of the team for VCU shot one for 14 in the first half you look at the first half numbers points in the paint for Texas 14 to 4 edge, and if Texas is going to come back in this game, points in the paint are going to be a big deal in the second half for them. Well, you hear about jamming it down people's throat, and this is why. Roach, obviously, that was a strategy for VCU to keep him quiet. They've done a good job of it. Roach can't press in the second half and get too far outside of himself and make it be about Roach. And Texas is going to have to get more baskets around the rim because VCU's done a great job of guarding the perimeter. So it's a 12 for 15 game from the field for Roach against North Carolina. The last three games he's going to combine 6 for 30. That includes the 0 for 4 in the first half so far here tonight. Second half action from the Irwin Center in Austin coming up. It's VCU with a one point lead over Texas. Fun match up here tonight in Austin at the Irwin Center. Texas, only one field goal in the last four minutes of the first half. Only hit one of their last six from the field to conclude the first half. And it's VCU will have the ball to start half number two and the one-point lead. Again, they held Snoop Roach to 0 for 4 shooting. It was very apparent, as you mentioned, to Coach Smart Lance, limiting Roach was a big deal for them in the first half. Yeah, it's a key, and it's something they talked about. They did it to perfection defensive wise on Roach. Evans just 
Kind of threw it back to a spot. He's fortunate that Jenkins was there. And Evans drives and lays it in and scores. Poor job by Osikowski. You can't let that guard split a double team or even a hedge in that case. Three-point lead is the largest of the game for VCU. Osikowski stops, pops, and scores. I like it, and that's where Texas has to take advantage of VCU around the rim. Use their size and length. Isaac Vance sealed off there. That's a three left side that's short for Marcus Evans. Coleman. Febris from the left elbow around and out. If you're, if you're Texas, you have to look at Van Jenkins and Evans. That's their big three. I mean, you, you pointed it out earlier. There's not a lot of offense coming from many other places for this VCU ball club. Those are the guys. Corey Douglas, not there. Osikowski. Roach trying to find a field goal tonight. Still can't. 0 for 5. Able to get the offensive rebound and feed Febris. Another offensive board. That one for Sims. Coleman the drive in the bucket. Or VCU just not closing out the defensive possession. Part of finishing the defensive possession is getting that, that rebound. You just can't give a team like Texas that many looks at the basket. They did an exceptional job. The exception of the rebound. Coleman, I mean, that's just almost a straight line drive after the second offensive rebound. Coleman on the defensive side just picked up his second foul. Well, this is the fourth meeting in history between these schools. Of course, there's the one last year, won by Texas at VCU. But the road team has won all three meetings in history between these schools. Uh oh, the jinx is on. <laughs> this is Jinx City. Texas has won two of the three meetings overall. Just thrown away by Evans and going the other way. Chase Febris slams it home. Fevers that time on the foul. A 6-0 lead, a 6-0 run, I should say, for Texas has given them a three-point lead. Well, and we don't have a shot chart in front of us, but a lot of layups here early for either team. Fevers doing the right thing, driving that ball hard and finishing. Sounds to me like the message in both locker rooms might have been, hey, get to the rim. There you go. You, you can almost hear what either coach was talking about. Yeah, every hoop on both sides to start the second half has been a layup. Yeah, and a three ball attempt off the mark for Marcus Evans. There's Roach in the lane. His foot connected the foot of Evans. Looks like they're going to give that foul to Vince Williams. His first. Texas does a good job on the underneath out of bounds. Look for their corners. They often get good shots. Out of the underneath inbound plays. Roach trying to break down Van. That shot partially blocked. Roach now 0 of 6 from the field. Yeah, there's just nothing there for him offensively right now. He has to be careful not to press to get outside of what Texas is trying to do. Evans gets in the lane, stops but commits the offensive foul as he ran right into Herman Roach. And Roach, one of the better defenders in the country. And you sometimes want to see with young guys allow their offense to affect their defense. In this case, no. He knows Evans 
the best player for VCU, and this is a key matchup for both of these ball clubs. Texas just subbed four players. The only player that didn't come off the floor was Roach. And he's the senior. With these young guys from Texas will still look for Roach to make the right plays, passes, as well as lead them. Seven on the shot clock. Roach, the pick and roll with Hayes. With that's punched out from behind by Van, with just two on the shot clock staying with Texas. Do they know it's a, a late shot clock? Are they aware? They're right over by their bench. Somebody better have said something. It's coming in for Roach and goes off the leg of Vance. And now there's just one on the shot clock. Yeah, and they didn't seem organized. And I'm putting that on Roach. He's looking to the bench. He's got a... And, I think Shaka agrees. He's got to get his guys, his troops organized, if you will. Coleman, more of a natural point guard. Coach Smart substitutes Roach out. Shot clock violation. I really think it had a lot to do with the two seconds left on that clock. But the young fella Fabris doing the right thing, taking it to the rack. Texas leads by three. Texas head coach Shaka Smart facing his old team VCU right now. Texas up by three. The lady sitting behind the VCU bench. That is Diane Long. She made the trip here. She is the executive secretary, the senior secretary for VCU basketball. She worked for Shaka in the basketball program, but she's been working for the hoops program at VCU since the early 80s, since J.D. Barnett was the head coach. So she has worked for nine different head coaches at VCU as the secretary. And we asked Mike Rhodes, I said, hey, you, you brought Diane Long. And he, and he said, that's our secret weapon. Of course I brought her. She's sitting there to the right. You see in the VCU jersey is her husband, David, as well. And she is one of the longtime contributors of the program for VCU. Diane Long has made the trip tonight. And a chance to see Shaka and his family as well again. Let's put in with the left hand of Marcus Santos Silva. And we have ourselves a one-point game. Yeah, and she's... She is a, a, a key, a quiet assassin. And many of these programs have people who have been there, like Miss Long, and just do a great job, and they're critical. And Texas has Leslie Parks, who has also been here for several years. They do so much work, and they're so passionate about the programs, and, and they truly are, Mark, a, a big part of the fabric and, and the reason why these programs have so much success. Well, one of the emotional moments for Shaka, and there were many last year when he returned to VCU, I was able to witness that in person, is when they brought out before the game Diane Long and Shaka. And I think Shaka and a lot of folks were kind of fighting back tears. There are a lot of lifelong friendships that are going to endure despite Shaka moving on to Austin. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and you're right. I mean, that was an amazing time for the program and you know, the apex of, of Shaka's career and you go through so much so many ups and downs uh, those tears are, are, are heartfelt and real and I think in general VCU fans still think of Shaka very warmly the only kind of part that they really regret is when he left they had a bunch of recruits that were going to come in that then decommitted and went elsewhere that went to other programs that had a lot of success I think folks want to know what would have happened had Shaka stayed with that uh, recruiting class that would have stayed around at VCU well, we have a ninth lead change of the game, and VCU is up by one, 38-37. And Santo Silva did a nice job of staying with it and just squirting that ball up. I mean, right now, they're getting it done on Will, that is VCU. Three from the right corner is a little long for Courtney Ramey. You know, potentially out of necessity, Texas is starting to fall in love with the three ball, something that hadn't been very kind to them. VCU looks like they're willing to give that up. Santos tipped out off Ramey, loose ball. And the collision between Mitru Long. That's a tough call. And that is P.J. Bird. I mean, who had the right to that? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, the, the foul is going to be on Texas. You can hear the home crowd. It's going on Mitchell Long, his third. Yeah, that's a tough call for official to see. But from my angle, 
And it looked like a almost a free ball or, or no call. And the ball gets tipped out. And whose ball is that? Well, you saw Bird tap it once, and he didn't really have control of it. But he did make contact with the loose ball, and maybe that's why the call went his way. But you're right, Lance. So that's one of those loose balls. Two guys just trying to make a play. Yeah. Mikhail Sims. You see, without Evans on the floor, BCU's going to look to play through their bigs. Williams traveled. You know, with this, with this roster on the floor for VCU, they don't have one of their big three. There's eight VCU turnovers. It's Kermit Roach back on the floor for the Longhorns. You see he's averaging almost 17 points per game to lead Texas in scoring. Just two points tonight. They both came from the line. Roach is 0 for 6 from the field. But he's gotten a lot of attention, no question, for the VCU defense tonight. Yeah, and rightfully so. Part of the struggle for Roach is nothing has happened in the open floor. I mean, everything has been a half-court setting. Speaks to the job that VCU has done balancing their defense and making sure that he's had to earn everything. Coleman, lob, Sims comes back down with it, and then back up to stuff it with two on the shot clock. Boy, he just threw that up by the rim, and one of the bigs was not there. That's all you got to do with, with Sims and Jackson on the floor. Counts anyway. Hepe called for the goaltender to roll in nonetheless. And the bucket for VCU puts them back up by one. Boy, this is a repeat of what we saw earlier with Williams attacking the feet. And watch Coleman. He just throws this up. And he knows there's only one man in the gym that can go get that. His name is Jericho Sims. VCU's doing a great job. They're making these guys the point guards and otherwise for Texas work at every level. Both team off to a 4 for 10 shooting start to begin the second half. Second foul on Kel Sims. And these are critical minutes for VCU allowing Van and Jenkins and, and Evans to get some rest. Texas keeping them under wraps. It's a wide open Roach for a three. Off Sims and out of bounds to VCU. So Roach now 0 for 7. Yeah, and I saw the reaction to Roach. He's got to get out of his head and just play basketball. And, and not feel sorry for himself. I mean, they're doing a great job. He just got to play basketball. And those seven field goal attempts missed by Roach, three have been three-point attempts. And Coach Roach at the VCU has a term. He, he kept talking about playing with frustration. He talks about it as it relates to his team, and he doesn't like it. That's exactly what Roach is doing. This is a freshman out of Houston, Pete, a B.J. Bird. P.J. Bird off the mark with the three. And Bird's in there to run offense. A lot different than Evans in terms of his style as a point guard. Sims, nice up and under to lay it in. He has 10 points. Well, this is one of Sims' better games since he's been here at Texas, and particularly this season. Just doing a great job of being poised around that room. Mobley comes crashing in, generates some contact and a foul on Texas. Third foul on Jericho Sims. But he's been one of the important offensive contributors tonight for Texas. Oh, yeah, they're sending it to the big fella. and He's doing the right thing, finishing all night long. An 0 for 7 shooting night so far tonight. And Kerwin Roach, it's just a one-point lead for Texas with under 11 and a half minutes to play in Austin. This game's really been played within an eight-point range. The, long, uh, the largest lead for Texas has been five. Largest lead for VCU, three. So, Lance, it's, no, nobody's either going on a, some huge run at all tonight. It's really been played within a fairly tight range. Yeah, and I, I honestly thought we would see a little more havoc. I think VCU has just done a masterful job 
of maintaining the control and pace of this game, which has impacted Texas's ability to find any rhythm other than really jamming it inside. Coming up this Saturday, Georgetown Syracuse at 3.30 Eastern. Then Yale takes on Zion Williamson and Duke at Cameron Indoor. ESPN College Hoops Saturday, 3.30 and 5.30 Eastern, live on ESPN and streaming live on the ESPN app. 41 all. Great to have you with us along with Lance Blake. I'm Mark Neely. Shock is smart, facing another one of his former assistants. He faced one, Mike Jones, who's the head coach at Radford on Friday night and lost to Radford 62-59. Mike Rhodes, who was on that staff as well, was Shock is smart as the head coach. See you giving his team a battle tonight. Well, and that was a play call. How about the confidence in Coach Smart having in Roach? That was an ISO. Well off on the three. But the offensive rebound. And Silva now with eight points. Yeah, and, and that's just not being disciplined. Gilmore doing a great job of getting himself in position. Texas not boxing out. That, that young man, Gilmore, he'll get every one of them if you don't put a body in. Wisitkowski lost the handle, but there was Roach. Another miss for Roach. Goes for nine from the field is Colonel Roach. And the Texas foul as Bird was tripped up. You can see the frustration for Kerlin Roach right now. Can't buy one from the field. Yeah, and this will exacerbate that frustration. You have two misses, and then you come out of the game. I mean, you, so now you go on the bench thinking about your misses. Now Roach, who was so effective in Vegas in the tournament against North Carolina, at a career high 32 points. He was 12 of 15 from the field. And a team high 15 points in the following game against Michigan State. Put up, go field off the mark. Midway through this second half, it's VCU with the two-point lead. Mitru Long, down low, stepped by Sims. That's been their best offense tonight, is feeding Sims around the rim. Yeah, that's the game for Texas, really, is, is getting into the teeth of this defense when they can, and or throwing it over the top to Jericho Sims. So 12 for Sims, six coming in each half. Sims on the other side, that being Mikel Sims for VCU. Loose ball, Bird gets to it first, and a little touch foul there by Osikowski is his first personal. And how about the job that VCU has done with Evans on the bench? I mean, this is exceptional basketball, just gang rebounding again. I talked about it a moment ago. This is all will. This is will and effort. Bird to the bench. The aforementioned Marcus Evans has come back for VCU. Uh, Mobley gives him the lead. Great action. Long outlet. Hayes <laughs> dramatically <laughs> ties it. Speaking of action, exactly what he does. I mean, those hands, ability to run and finish. Good as any in the NC2A. Back and forth game between VCU and Texas. We slip under the nine minute mark. Evans, long three. The long arms of Hayes pull down the rebound. This is the freshman Courtney Ramey. Yeah, I thought he missed the throw ahead to Long. Long had a drive to the basket. Wisitkowski in a crowd. Foul is on the floor, no basket. Foul on Mobley. Well, I'm just surprised that VCU would not bring help there for Mobley. Osikowski almost crab walked him from the corner. I mean, that's a difficult guard. I'm sure Mobley gives up easily 40, 50 pounds.
And we've had 13 combined field goals in this half. They've all come around the rim for both sides. Nobody's been able to hit really from long range, and that trend continues with Febris. The offensive rebound keeps it for Texas. Yeah, the game clearly is going to be won in the trenches. Hayes, and one. Back down into the trenches they go. Yeah, and they are in the trenches, but this young man, he's just so special with his hands. Watch the catch and the contact and finish. I mean, every week, every game, he gets a little bit better. And then I'm starting to see also more and more scouts watch this young man from the NBA. I mean, that's just... Excellent finish with with just some of the best hands that I've seen by a big or from a big in a lot of years in college. Get back, get back, get back, get back. A two-point game as we come up on the eight-minute mark in Austin. Evans stripped by Hayes, loose ball. Ramey has Mitru Long and Hayes from a tough angle and there to finish is Dylan Osikowski. The crowd's into it now in Austin. Time it out. It won't show up in the box score, but speaking of hands, Hayes created that turnover, getting his ball, his hands on the ball. Right at the top, the young fella hero catch. All he could do was get it up, and then the big fella Osikowski brings it home. Texas with a. Texas on a 6-0 run has taken a four-point lead, seven and a half minutes to go, and they've been making some noise around the rim. Yeah, and the big fella's been saving the day. You see Jericho finishing. This is where Texas has done a great job of staying close, frankly, and now taking the lead on VCU because without these guys, it would be a struggle. Texas has made it a battle of the bigs, which has benefited them well. Ramey, there was contact. Great no call. Yeah. Great no call, and Van does it again. Van did this earlier in the game where he just goes up vertical and Ramey didn't go to make the basket. He went in hopes to get a call. And officials did a good job of not bailing him out. Here's Van at the other end trying to stuff it, but he lost the handle on it. And it's out of bounds. And now they're saying it went off Texas, but I think it just came out of his mitts. Well, I think Ramey slapped that. Out of Van's hand. And out of a point in the game where they could go to the monitor. Checked out with 7.17 to go. So it stays with VCU. Job down low. Santos Silva looking for some space. Trying to request that shot because of Hayes. Yep. Yeah, there's nothing there. He knows. Well, Hayes can wait for him to release that and then go block it. Sikowski, that was punched out from behind by Vince Williams. They find Van, who lost the handle, able to get it back in the corner and save it for Evans. Evans, Santos Silva. Great ball movement. Off the backboard, missed by Van. Evans, three, that's short. Tell you what, it's not the prettiest basketball in the world, Lance, but both these teams right now, the effort level is through the, through the roof. Yeah, it is. Both teams know there's a lot on the line here, and BCU, I think, has done a good job of dictating a, a frenetic pace, if you will, and kept Texas like that from finding any kind of rhythm. Marco Santos Silva knocked it free, and then Evans saving it along the sideline is fouled. Wosikowski well, earned his second personal. Yeah, VCU, they just pester you. They're, they're, they seem to be everywhere in terms of running down loose balls. I mean, if this is what Havoc's about, they're actually doing a pretty good job. <laughs> it's been a different type of Havoc than we expected. We really haven't seen the, the, 
the full court pressure defense all that much. But there has been some havoc. After the 17th foul, we got a one and one coming here for Marcus Evans. And the, and the, had it, the havoc is, comes in the form of a frenetic pace. Well, one thing Texas has done a better job of, remember in the first half for VCU, Jenkins and Evans combined for 24 of the 32 points for VCU. But with that free throw, they only have to combine three and now make it four points in the second half for VCU. I thought Jenkins was the difference offensively for VCU in terms of helping give them that lead for Texas in the first half. Sikowski lost his footing. And it's scooped up by Deriante Jenkins. Yeah, and Osikowski, he's a senior. He's got to step up bigger. When I say step up, he can't be making costly turnovers, poor passes at this point in the game. That's 14 Texas turnovers tonight. I thought that was the difference in the Radford game. The older players stepped up. Texas is, couldn't find them late. Jenkins partially blocked. Shot clock at two, and scoring is Santos Silva. A big bucket for the Rams, who have tied it at 49. Boy, it, it, you just can't make them go away. And a double-double for Santos Silva. Now 10 points to go along with 14 rebounds. Yeah, and again, Osikowski, if he wants to stop that play defensively, he's got to come up with a loose ball. Williams ran into Osikowski and commits the personal his third. Stopping the clock with under five minutes to play. The 18 foul will send Osikowski to the line for a one and one. You know, it, going down the stretch here, Mark, this will be a test of will, grit, and the steadier hand. Not Sikowski. very steady there. This is the front end. It stays tied at 49. Open look. A three splashed in by Sean Mobley. Look at the spacing. Very well executed. Credit Van for the hard drive. And then you saw Mobley with the little chirp. He knew it'd be a good look. A 7-0 run for VCU. Watch the hard drive with the left hand. He just spins right around. And you heard a goo goo. Nice job, Moly. VCU with the lead. Well, VCU has only lost twice this year. One of them came in overtime to St. John's in the Legends Classic in Brooklyn. St. John's takes a one-point lead with five seconds left in OT. Watch Marcus Evans come up. He's going to attempt a three. There looked to be some contact and no call. And the game ended in that fashion. Is that a foul, Lance? <laughs> Absolutely, that's a foul. <laughs> I mean. Yeah. And they lose by a point. And St. John's won the Legends Classic. That's one of the heartbreaking losses. Of only two losses for VCU, and that was a heartbreaker. They played an overtime game in their next game against Hofstra and won it. But they're in a tight game here in Austin. They have a 52-49 lead. A three by Mobley before we went to break is the only made three in the half on either side. The teams have been a combined 0 for 14 in three-point shooting in the half prior to that. Turned into a game around the basket. Well, Sims was pushed out by Santos Silva a good 10, 12 feet from the bucket, but still got that one to go. Yeah, and how about the lift just to jump right over top of him. Santo Silva did about as good a job as he could do. Surprised again, VCU isn't bringing help considering what he's done this far in the game. 11th VCU turnover on the travel committed by Santo Silva. Don't go anywhere. It's a one-point game with under four minutes to go. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball. 
Found some photos of Mike Rhodes and Shaka Smart on the same staff. Mike Rhodes spent five seasons as a VCU assistant under Shaka Smart from 2009 to 2014. This is before the game, the handshakes between the two. Well, just five days ago, a different former VCU assistant, now head coach at Radford, Mike Jones, brought a team in here and beat Shaka Smart in Texas 62-59. He's hoping it's not deja vu all over again five days later with a different former assistant, Mike Rose. Yeah, and these games are hard on a number of levels. Obviously, we spent a lot of time together. These coaches know each other well. They text, they call. Uh, you're playing against your team. and. For VCU, I mean, what do they have to lose? You know, for, for Texas, they're fighting not to have a three-game losing streak. After winning the first five games of the season, they turn it over now. Well, that's painful for a coach. You, you spend two minutes drawing up a, a play that you want to execute. Clearly, they want to get the ball inside. You don't even get a chance for the shot attempt or execution. The Texas play in this zone like they're going to force or try to force VCU to make a shot from the outside. Well, Mobley made a three from the right side. That one from the left, way off the mark. Here comes Ramey, tried to lob it to Sims, but he hit the rim instead. And it's an empty possession for Texas. And it's like a, another turnover, essentially. And I'm sure Coach Smart would like to have both of those possessions back. Three minutes to go, VCU by one. Remus featured 10 ties and 15 lead changes. Going on Hayes. An offensive foul against Texas. Yeah, Santos Silva did a very nice job of seeing the action and getting set just outside of the charge line. Excellent defensive play. Isaac Fan trying the monster slam, but had that knocked away and out of bounds. Took some contact as well from Sims. Well, I don't know if there was. Ooh. I think these Texas bigs are just challenging. To call. I mean, they're so long and rangy. And that's four fouls on Sims. First free throw up and in for Isaac Van. Yeah, it, it, he won't be coming out of the game you know, because he's been the catalyst for Texas offensively. Van nails both. Three point lead for VCU as we come up on the two and a half minute mark. Roach has not had a field goal tonight. 0 for 9 from the field. Roach in the lane. Deflection out of bounds. Touch last by Roach in Texas. VCU ball. What a frustrating offensive night for Kerwin Roach. Yeah, this and point. he can't get selfish at this point in press in terms of trying to score. Long pass, and Santos Silva loses it. And it goes back over to Texas. So some pressure there for Texas pays off. And Evans having some trouble, looks like, with a knee. Ooh. What the greatest pass, but Santos Silva has got to catch that. Especially at this point of the game. I mean, both teams a little careless with the with the ball. That's uh, Marcus Evans walking very gingerly, getting some help to the bench. He's in some pain. A big loss there for VCU. Here's Hayes. Pass well defended and read by Jenkins to steal it for VCU. Eight turnover in the last seven minutes. Yeah, Texas has just been horrible for it. We're taking care of the ball here late. 
Schofield's pass for Mobley, deflected, stolen. Roach in the lane, got a field goal to fall. And missed his first nine. Gets a big bucket there to make it a one-point game for Texas. I think the key for VCU here is what do you do without Evans, your floor leader. They did a good job earlier in the half, but here late, he's more like a closer with his VCU ball club, and he looks like he is in intense pain. Evans being worked on on the bench. Remember, this is a guy who's had a couple of Achilles injuries. And when I talked with Mike Rhodes before the game today, I said, well, where's Evans health-wise? And he said, oh, maybe 70%. He, he would probably say he's better than that, but that doesn't take into account what's just happened here and transpired in the last few minutes. Oh, I think that percentage has dropped. I mean, at the looks of things, I can't tell if that's a knee or cramp. Well, the way he exited the court his left leg was was almost completely stiff yeah exactly and he couldn't even bend the knee he keeps drinking water well hopefully it's just a cramp now vcu has shot 29 percent from the field for the game and they lead it by one here in Austin with a minute 16 to go. Yeah, and they and, have possession. And if you're VCU, you would have taken this setup all day long. A minute 10 in the game, up one on Texas at Texas. And Texas has played a lot of zone, and VCU has done a great job not letting it discourage them from continuing to try to execute their offense. Three to shoot. Jenkins, shot clock expired. Texas gets the ball back with 53 seconds to go. That's the 15th VCU turnover. Texas uses a timeout. That's official. Darren George talking with Shaka Smart. The screen set by Santos Silva, but the long arms of Hayes changed that shot. Yeah, if I, I'm, if I'm in the Texas huddle. The most important thing is to get a shot off. Texas with the eight turnovers in seven minutes. I mean, that's pretty egregious. And certainly has to be a point of emphasis because I don't care how good that play is you draw up, if you can't even get a shot off, it's saw, going, to, going to be quite challenging. You saw our game re reset. Possession arrow favors Texas. But the next Texas foul will put VCU in the double bonus. 18 fouls on the VCU side. Does VCU extend the defense and apply a little pressure? I think if I'm VCU, I put a little pressure on Texas to run some clock. And even potentially drop back in a zone because Texas is going to look to go inside. And try to force Texas to shoot over his top. Coming up on Friday, ESPN has an NBA doubleheader to kick off the weekend. It begins at 7 Eastern. 76ers take on the Pistons. And then at 9.30, Warriors Bucks. NBA Friday begins at 7 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Well, again, Lance, this hasn't been a game you're going to send the tape to the Smithsonian. <laughs> but the effort from both sides has been extremely good. Yeah, and the, I mean, some guys have emerged as well. Uh, I think the Texas Sims is... is Broken out, if you will. He came out of the gate slow on the season. Had a lot of expectations from what he did last year. And for BCU, what a well-executed game plan. I mean, shutting down Roach, team-wise. The big three, Jenkins has been struggling for BCU tonight. He got it going, and he was the difference in the first half. So in spite of the poor collective performance, if you will, there have been some bright spots for either either ball club. 
Well, the officials are at the table. They are taking a look at the monitor to check on the possibility of a flagrant foul. And Darren George, one of the three officials, came over to mention that to me. Let's see the play that they're looking at here. No. Uh, if they're looking at the one on Santos Silva, that just looked like a clean screen. Yeah, that was a roach. He'll flop with the arms and try to draw a foul. No way that's a flagrant of, of any level. They could call it that, but there's nothing flagrant about that. Kelly Self is our lead official, along with Darren George and Pat Driscoll tonight. I mean, that just looks like a clean screen to me. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, am I missing something here? No, uh, I don't. I don't know what made them want to even look at it. Maybe it was Roach and with the flop, but nothing about it even looked kind of like. Well, they've been taking a, a significant amount of time to look at this, so it almost makes me think. Are they looking at something different than that? Now the three officials talk it over. You know, this could have some impact in terms of momentum. Because we've talked about the flow of the game all night long and Texas not being able to get into a rhythm and VCU controlling that pace, but a number of factors does does this give Evans more time if it was a cramp? Well, it looks like there's going to be no call. Which, from what we saw, that screen set by Marcus Santos Silva was a clean screen. But right now, we saw Marcus Evans, who was an excruciating pain a short time ago with what we hoped was only cramps, but he has not come back in the game. VCU extending the defense. So it's Texas ball, 53 seconds left. VCU by one. I'm going to take that back. It's going to play a straight man. Roach fires to the corner, comes out, and Ramey a three. Is that the shot after the timeout that you want that play? Well, I think I think they had to take that. That was what was open. Frankly, it wasn't a bad look. And also, you've hopefully got the better rebounder, or the best rebounder on the floor in Jackson. Texas staying in the zone. Probably the most important possession of the game for VCU. Shot clock's down to five. Game clock down to 14. Jenkins pulls up, shoots, a miss, rebound. 10 seconds left. Ramey had it punched out from behind. It's going to go out of bounds off VCU with 6.6 .6 seconds to go. Timeout, Texas. Yeah, I think if that ball doesn't get punched out of Ramey's hands, Texas and Coach Smart allows the play to happen because you don't want to give the defense a chance to set up. Well, we saw it on the last timeout. It was a quick couple of passes and a three by Ramey. And my question there, Lance, was with that much time in the game, yeah, you want an open shot, but now you just need something to the rim, don't yeah, you? Well, you get fouled, take. You would hope you could get something to the rim, but I think more than that, Mark, you need something quick. Right. Because when you look at the score, Texas is down one point, and it could be a, to a coin toss if you get one shot. If I'm Texas, I like having my rebounders, particularly Jackson, on the floor here. In the event you miss and don't make the shot, you can get a putback for an offensive on an offensive rebound. Especially with the way that Texas has been shooting, I would not want to have to take the just the last shot. Now, if you're on the road, different situation. But at home. <laughs> With those bigs, I think I'm trying to get it up quick and hopefully 
One of my bigs can give me a second shot if you don't make it. Now, when we're finished here, we'll send you to TCU SMU for Moody Coliseum. With all Galindo and Tim Welsh, that game is already underway on ESPN News. Texas's largest lead has been five. VCU's largest lead has been three. It's been a very narrow range, but it's come down to the wire here at Austin tonight. Texas down one with 6.6 .6 seconds to go. Yeah, what? He put it in Roach's hands. Roach, a spin, back for Coleman, a three. In and out. And VCU has come to Austin and beaten Texas 54-53. Boy, who would have thought they would look for a three, especially the way that Texas has been struggling all game long. Great job by VCU of protecting the paint and closing it out with the rebound. VCU shot only 28% from the field for the game, and they win it 54-53. Boy, it was a hard-fought game. We knew it would come down to the trenches because of those field goal shooting percentages you talked about. But VCU had to overcome a ton of adversity. He just did a great job against a Texas team that's been struggling of late. Texas 4 for 17 in three-point shooting, 0 for 7 in three-point shooting in the second half. And they lose it by one, their third straight loss, and fall to 5 and 3. VCU improves to 7 and 2. That's going to take care of things from here in Austin. For Lance Blanks and her entire crew, I'm Mark Neely. Thanks for sharing this one with us. Let's send you to Dallas. TCU, SMU for Moody Coliseum with Lowell Galindo and Tim Welsh. Fellas.